And then arouse the thought, how wonderful it would be if I had happiness in its causes. May I be truly well and happy. And then with each out-breath, imagine rays of light radiating out from your heart, filling your entire body and mind, and transforming into everything you need to be happy. So with each out-breath, breathe out the light of loving-kindness, sending to yourself whatever you need to be happy, in the short term and the long term. And imagine you've now found the genuine happiness that you seek. And simply rest in that state of inner well-being. And next, bring to mind someone close to you, a loved one, who's currently experiencing some sort of physical or mental problem or suffering. And imagine them very clearly in front of you. And arouse the thought, how wonderful it would be if they were free of suffering and its causes. May you be free of all suffering as causes. May you be free of this problem of suffering. And then imagine their problem or suffering in the form of black smoke filling their body. And with each in-breath, imagine drawing that black smoke out of their body and bringing it into the sphere of light at your heart, completely dissolving it there. So with each in-breath, breathe in with compassion, dissolving and extinguishing their suffering at your heart.
and then imagine that now the black cloud is completely extinguished and now they're completely free of that problem, free of that suffering. And take joy in this. And then arouse the thought, how wonderful it would be if they had happiness in its causes. May you be truly well and happy. And then with each out-breath, imagine rays of light radiating out from the sphere of light at your heart and filling their entire body and mind and transforming into everything they need to be happy. So with each out-breath, breathe out the light of loving-kindness, sending to them whatever they need to be happy, in the short term and the long term. And then imagine they've now found the genuine happiness that they seek. And take joy in this. And then allow your field of loving kindness and compassion to expand out further. And allow your mind to move around. And whoever comes to mind, whether it's a friend, a stranger, or even a difficult person, attend to them. May you be free of all suffering and its causes. May you be truly well and happy. And breathing in with compassion, dissolving and extinguishing their suffering at your heart, and breathing out the light of loving kindness, sending to them whatever they need to be happy. Allow your mind to continue to move around, wherever comes to mind, whether it's an individual or even a group of people, attend to them. Breathing in with compassion, breathing out the light of loving kindness.
Um, just one point I wanted to mention about this practice. Sometimes when people first start this practice, they have a some little apprehension about the practice. Um, and often one of the apprehensions is like, you know, if I do this practice with someone who has a serious illness, will I get the illness? And of course the answer is no, because this is a mental exercise. You can't actually take their illness from them. But then when that's explained, people go, well, what's the point in doing it then? The point of this practice is that <clears throat> you are the main beneficiary of this practice. Because by doing this practice with respect to others, it's reducing our selfish mind, increasing our mind of cherishing others, it's decreasing our attachment and aversion and increasing our loving kindness and compassion. Which means then outside of meditation, we're more likely to help others in a more genuine way. So we help others indirectly through increasing love and compassion in this practice. Then we help them more outside in daily life. But directly also this practice can have an impact particularly if we have a connection with the person we're doing the practice with, even if they're sort of on the other side of the planet, um, due to the interdependent nature of reality, if we really do this practice in a heartfelt way with people we have a connection with, we can have a direct, subtle, positive impact on that person's mind, and I think there is some, even some scientific evidence to support that. So we shouldn't underestimate the power of the mind. Um, any questions before we take a tea break? This, this, uh, this is what I want to ask you before, uh, because I feel that uh, I have to believe in this. Because uh, in, in my past, if somebody, oh. in the past day, if somebody come and, come and uh, say something, he has the headache, so after, headache. He had a headache, yeah? Yeah, so after that, I feel this. My, I, it's like I'm a party, I'm a party. empathy, empathy, empathy. Yeah. like empathy. Yeah. He has the addict, after that I have the addict. <laughs> so if I do this, the, the image of the black smoke was very... Uh, Difficult. Was like, you know, exactly, because our selfish mind doesn't want to take that. Yeah. It should be difficult. If it's easy, if it's easy, either we are completely unselfish already, or it's just a sort of mechanical smoke and light thing and we're not, there's nothing touching. So it should be like this, because that's our selfish mind going, oh, I don't want to take that. But also you're afraid of this. I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid that... Uh, and it's your selfish mind yeah. that makes you afraid. Exactly. But remember, this practice is a mental exercise. It's not an energetic thing. You know, there are certain energetic things like Reiki and so forth that are shifting energies. And there we can be affected by that because it's physical. But this is not physical at all. I feel it energetic. Because your love and compassion is manifesting in the body. But you're not actually taking other person's energy. I give my energy. I feel it in my body when I do it. Of course you should. Because if we have a strong mind of love and compassion, that should have some physical positive impact in the body, of course. Particularly if we're sensitive to the body, we should notice a lot of things going on in the body, of course. Okay, let's break there for our afternoon tea. Again, 3.45 next door, the yoga, and then 5 o'clock, um, we'll come back and we'll continue this shamatha practice of stillness in motion. Mm -hmm.